The gospel reading is from Luke chapter 3, verses 15 to 17 and 21 to 22. As the people were filled with expectation and all were questioning in their hearts concerning John, whether he might be the Messiah, John answered all of them by saying, I baptize you with water, but one who is more powerful than I is coming. I am not worthy to untie the strap of his sandals. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. His winnowing fork in his hand to clear his threshing floor and to gather the wheat into his granary and the chaff he will burn the unquenchable fire. Now when all the people were baptized and when Jesus also had been baptized and was praying, the heaven was opened and the Holy Spirit descended upon him in bodily form like a dove. And a voice came from heaven, you are my son, the beloved, with you I am well pleased. Good morning. Let us pray for the preacher. Heavenly Father, thank you for bringing us all here to be together physically and spiritually. Your love was abundantly with us this past week. We thank you for bringing us your spirited servant, Reverend Vicki Starnes, and we pray for your blessings on her. Please make her words enrich our minds and soothe our souls. Lord, we ask you to bless Pastor Terry in this time of her Sabbath leave. May her mind and body and spirit be attended by you, our great healer. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you. That's a nice tradition. Do you do that all the time or just when you have guest preachers? Anyway, thank you, that was very nice. So my grandmother's name was Beulah. Do you know any Beulahs? Yeah. Not, not many folks have started using that name for their young girls now. I've seen folks naming their baby girls May and Emma and Anna and Evelyn and even Ruby. Um, which are all old, old names, friends. I mean, I had aunts named all of those things, but I haven't heard of any Beulahs yet, but that was her name. My grandmother loved it, she, enough to give it to my mother, who hated it. So my mom always called herself by her middle name, which is Waveline. I bet you don't know any of those either. When my mother got married, she changed her name to Waveline Trout Starnes. The Beulah was totally gone. Thank heavens, when I was born, my parents said, we like the name Victoria. That's beautiful. We'll name her that. So I want you to say your name out loud, OK? We're going to say them all out loud. On the count of three, you ready? One, two, three. Victoria. One. <laughs> that's cute. So that's the name. Now, how many of you go by the name you were given at birth? Not everybody. Isn't that interesting? So our parents decided that we would have a certain name, right? That we should go by that name. Now, sometimes we go by nicknames. Somebody at the early service, her name is Leslie, but she goes by Lee. So my grandson is being called Wally, even though his first name is Flynn. I'm not even going to tell you why that happened. So I'm just dying to see what will happen. He's only, he's, he's only 11 months old, but I'm dying to see what will happen when he goes off to school and the teacher is calling Flynn, Flynn, and he just sits there. But our names are something that we have known forever. They're an identifying marker for, that says who we are, and everyone has a name. We've been given names like Beulah and Waveline and Victoria and Patty and Casey? Haley and Sarah, who read for us. So those are, our, those are our given names. But then we have family names, our last names. My, my um, 
parents' last names were Todd and Trout Starnes. My husband's name is Ewald Kofiel Stranathan. Today's scripture lessons tell us that we who have been baptized in the holy waters, we carry those names, but we also carry God's name. Christian, saved, precious. That's who we are. We're named by God. We're claimed by God in the holy waters of baptism. We are made God's child. So folks, this is the Sunday when we celebrate that our Lord was baptized. Actually, it was supposed to be last Sunday, but I talked to Sam, Sam's a friend of mine, the pastor who was here last week. I talked to Sam and I said, are you gonna do baptism of the Lord? And he said, no, I'm not, I'm not gonna do that. I'm gonna talk about you know, becoming a disciple. And I said, oh, I really wanna do baptism of the Lord. So I just decided, Sam and I decided it would be fine if I did it out of order. So don't tell any you know, worship professors that you might know from Wesley Seminary that we did it out of order, but it's fine. It's all in this time of epiphany, which is the season after Christmas. So this is the day, the baptism of the Lord is the day that Jesus chose to present himself to John the Baptist to be, and he asked to be baptized. Jesus chose to go down into the water of the River Jordan and most importantly, when he came back up out of that stream of flowing water, the Holy Spirit descended upon him like a dove. And a voice, which was God's, came from heaven and said, you are my son, the beloved, precious. With you, I am well pleased. In other words, you make me happy, boy. That's what God said. You are mine and I am yours. So that's what this day is all about, remembering Jesus' baptism, but also remembering our own. Now, even though the Methodists among us, most of us were baptized in, as infants, we, we can't remember, but we can still attempt to remember. I love that the children said, I remember my brother's baptism. I mean, I think that's cool. You can, you can share that memory together. In spite of all that, we still come today to remember, to imagine what it was like when we were baptized, when our parents stood at the font with the pastor and said, our names, we bring Victoria to be baptized. We bring Sarah to be baptized. We bring Patty to be baptized. To hear the word from God that says, you are precious in my sight. So as I was getting ready for this Sunday, I kept thinking, I kept seeing that word precious in the Isaiah passage and in the commentaries. And I said to my husband, isn't there a song that says precious in his sight? And so we were trying to think of it. He said, yes, it's a hymn. Then we started singing Jesus Loves Me and we finished that song and realized it wasn't in there. And then when I sat down to write, I looked at the Isaiah passage again and then it came to me. Do you know what it is? Jesus loves the little children, all the children of the world, red and yellow, black and white, they are precious in his sight. Jesus loves the little children of the world. That's what this day is about, friends. This baptism of the Lord is all about remembering that we are not just anybody, we are God's somebody. We are God's child. We are named and claimed by the Almighty, and we are precious in God's sight. Before I retired, which was four years ago, I had been baptizing babies for 30 years. It was one of my favorite things to do. And I always did it the same way. I did it last year when I got to baptize my grandson, JD, in his home church, where his mother is the youth pastor in Columbus, Ohio. So when I stand at the font with the parents, I take the baby in my arms, and I always ask the same question. What name shall be given to this child? And sometimes the parents have this look on their face like, doesn't she know the name? Isn't it in the bulletin? Didn't we already go over this? But the reason I ask is because that's what baptism is. It's a naming. It's a claiming that this baby, this child, this adult sometimes, this teenager sometimes, is no longer just a baby, but now he is God's child. Now she will carry God's name. And then I dip my hands into the water three times in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. 
There is something special about our names and God's name. So have you ever been to see the Vietnam Veterans Memorial that's in DC? For those of you who've been there or maybe seen pictures, you know it's this long stretch of stone with a, a million, not a million, but it seems like a million names chiseled in remembrance of lives lost in that horrific war. And it's a very powerful memorial. Well, when Maya Lin, who was the designer of that memorial, was interviewed one time, she was explaining to a TV reporter why her work has come to, to have such a strong grip upon those Americans who visit it. And she said, it's the names. The names are the memorial. No edifice or structure can bring people to mind as powerfully as their names. God says in the Isaiah passage that we read today, I have called you by name, you are mine. That was so important to Israel at the time. So important to the people of God. It was a, it was a guarantee, it was a reminder that they came from God, that they were created and formed by Yahweh. And that's the kind of promise we all need to hear from time to time, right? The promise that banishes fear, announces redemption, salvation. It reminds us that God is there, as the scripture says, God is there to be with us when we pass through the waters, the rough rivers, when we walk through the fire. God will be there, Isaiah says, because you are precious in my sight, says the Lord. The fact that we are named and claimed by God is something that we can hold on to and feel comfort in from baptism to the grave throughout all of our lives. Now that reminder makes us feel good, right? Makes us feel precious. But there's another part of this name claim from God that we also need to remember today. It's like any good family with a name comes responsibility, accountability. We have to live up to our name. We have responsibilities to fulfill. Can't you hear one of your parents saying this to you? I know my mother said it to me. Come on, you're a part of this family. Get to work, do your job, pull your weight, act decent. That was my mother's favorite phrase, act decent. Don't let me down. Didn't somebody in your family at some point say that something like that to you? It's the same with our baptism. You see, when we are baptized, it's not just to claim the precious name, it's also to serve. For Jesus, his baptism was his first day on the job. First day of being a savior. First day of serving God. Well, folks, it's the same for us. Baptism names us and claims us and also prepares us for service. It's the first day on the job for us, too. We receive the waters, and then we turn and say, what can I do to serve you, Lord? So last Sunday, I understand that my friend and colleague, Sam Tryon, talked about the call that Jesus gives us to serve and how it doesn't matter our age or our, our talents or our gifts or even, even the amount of faith that we have. It doesn't matter. We are still called to serve. God has something in mind for us to do. And that gift that you have, that you think may not even be helpful to the church, might be exactly what the church needs. I remember going to visit an old woman in my very first full-time appointment, and she was in her 90s, and she no longer left her house except to go to the doctors. And she said, I just feel useless. I don't feel like I can do anything. And I said, well, do you pray? And she said, well, I pray every day. And I said, well, I'm going to bring you the church prayer list every week. And I'd love if you would pray for those people every week. And she did until she died. And that was her gift to bring to the family of God. So maybe your gift is watering plants or weeding the garden or caring for children or, or cooking for the hungry or, or visiting the folks who can't come to church anymore. There's a job for all of us and a chance to serve and it starts with our baptism. 
So in a few moments, we're going to do a remembrance of our baptism. We're going to remember that we are named and claimed by God and precious in God's sight. Because that's, that's the truth, friends. We are. And I know somewhere in your house, you probably have a piece of paper. It's either in a folder or a safe deposit box. Some safe place in your house, you have a piece of paper, which is your birth certificate, right? And on it is the name you were given at birth. But in the place where your parents' names would be found, there is also a secret message from God. And it says, you are mine and I am yours. Love me, serve me, make me proud. Because I love you and you are precious in my sight. Thanks be to God. Amen.